Welcome back to Sunday, and here we are, another worship service at New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church, and uh, we thank you. We thank you for joining us today, and we thank you for all your gifts that you send to us and uh, your generosity. It keeps us here, and today it's a little warm inside the sanctuary. Maybe even we have our live services if you want to catch them at 9 a.m. on each Sunday, and they're down on our picnic road, on Swamp Picnic Road in Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania, and we have a drive-in style, and even with the weather, it's been a little bit cooler out there, a little breeze in the shade, and now with all the lighting and being indoors a little bit, and we're having a little bit of heat wave here, um, <laughs> a little bit warm in here today, but um, I hope you're sitting in air conditioning, and I hope you're enjoying yourself, and, uh, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. The little things that we're doing the generosity, small things that we can do to make a difference in this world. And by you being safe out there in the world, you're protecting those uh, that have immunity concerns and also have other challenges. And so thank you, and let's begin worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Amen. So let us join together. You can go to newhanoverlutheran.org and you can download the music there and the worship page. And uh, we'll start right now if you want to get that prepared. And we'll start off by singing, Be Thou My Vision. By your spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Uh, please join Brenda Huntsberger uh, today, and if you wish to grab your Bibles, please do at this time, and uh, turn to Psalm number 119. Today's reading is from Psalm 119. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your teaching. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Brenda. And uh, now, could all the children please come forward? Come on down, and then adults too, and uh, get right up to your screen, because this one's gonna be good. This is our children's sermon today, and we're gonna talk about um, being generous, and we're gonna be talking about finding things, and, and uh, what would you give up? And so, um, and during our children's sermon, we have a very special guest, and uh, I want you to comment on our Facebook page while you're, you're watching it. If you can tell me what animal you hear in the background, and if you guess the animal's name, I will send you a special bonus. And if you send me um, a uh, email at pastor at newhanoverlutheran.org, um, I will send you a gift. So listen to the video. Figure out what the animal is, and the bonus answer is name the animal's name. So please listen closely as Jim and Diane uh, David Heiser, along with Elena, she goes by Allie, Gonzalez, gives us our message. Come on down. Greetings from Columbia, Tennessee. I'm Jim David Heiser, and this is Diane David Heiser and Allie Elena Gonzalez. And we're going to let you know we're kind of looking a little tropical in Hawaiian today. We're wearing our lays and Hawaiian shirts because even though we're in Tennessee, we're kind of on vacation, having a good time, so we're thinking about Hawaii and points like that. So that's the story there. It's children's sermon time, and we're bringing this video to you, as we said, all the way from Columbia, Tennessee, south of Nashville. And this is the home of Elena Gonzalez, our granddaughter and her parents, A.J. and Stacy Gonzalez, and four-month-old Luke Gonzalez. We're really happy to be here. So, this week's Gospel lessons focus on 13th chapter of Matthew, verses 31 to 33, and 44 to 52. Those scripture verses include talking about mustard seeds and fine pearls. Ellie has some props today. Mustard... Ellie, do you want to show us the mustard? Which not isn't exactly mustard seeds, but you get the idea. And what looks like a pearl bracelet. Do you want to show them your bracelet, Ellie? Woohoo! All right. Actual mustard seeds are very tiny, and real pearls are very precious and expensive. If we look at Bible scripture in the book of Matthew, Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven. We even hear a chicken in the background. Yeah, yeah, we got a chicken back there. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. That's the chicken. Wants to join us. It's the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Perch meaning... The birds come and sit on the branches, and you, this is a live, sort of a live video here, so you know, you hear the chickens and everything. Yeah, we, we, they have chickens in Tennessee, they have a lot of chickens in Hawaii, too. A lot of too. chickens in Hawaii. And also from Matthew, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant, and a merchant is a man who buys things. <laughs> Looking for fine pearls, when he found one of the great that was of great value he went away and sold everything he had and bought the pearl jesus is telling us that heaven will be 
truly wonderful, although we are small and cannot understand it now. When we arrive in heaven, it will be huge and amazing and beautiful. <laughs> Much like the mustard seed, which changes into a mighty tree, right? Yeah. And Jesus also says, all that we have now will seem like nothing compared to the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> kind of like selling our simple things and purchasing a beautiful pearl bracelet. Like yeah. the one Ellie has on right now. Right here, under the lay. There we go. <laughs> Ellie, you have mustard, which reminds us of a mustard seed, and special bracelet. Thanks for doing such a great job as being our special assistant today. And thank you one and all, including our chickens and roosters. Yes. Thank you all of you <laughs> back home in New Hanover, in Gilbertsville, Boyer Town and other locations <laughs> for allowing us to share our message from Tennessee. Let us pray. Bow your heads, please. Dear Lord, thank you for your lessons about heaven and mustard seeds and fine pearls. Thank you for being a wonderful God. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much to Diane and Ellie. And from all of us, we say... Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, guys. And uh, thank you for not being chicken to tell that story. So um, get your Bibles back out. And uh, please read along in Romans 8, verses 26 to 39. And listen to Brenda's word, the word of the Lord. The reading today is from the 8th chapter of Romans, beginning at the 26th verse. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading. Mm -hmm.
Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring indeed. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll get your Bibles handy and turn to Matthew chapter 13. We'll begin with uh, verse 31 to 33 and then skip forward to 44 to 52. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He, Jesus, put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown into the greatest of shrubs, it becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make its nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it all was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and put the good in one basket and then threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age, he tells them. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this, Jesus asked? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Please now turn back to your music pages, and if you downloaded it, follow along with Oh That I Had a Thousand Voices.
<laughs> well, that brings us to the, our sermon right now. And uh, we sure had a lot of parables in there, didn't we? Jesus just gets, you know, he's just rattling out these parables and the crowds are around him and the disciples and he asked them, did he get all that? And they're like, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, you don't want to look like the stupid one, right? You don't want to look like the one who doesn't get it when you have the Son of God, the Messiah, sitting in front of you and telling you these stories, right? These parables. And, and can you imagine that? You're sitting there and you're looking to your left, you look right, you know, and, and you're like, did you get that? Uh-huh, yeah, I got it. And you notice he doesn't go on and give a test afterwards, which is also very graceful and like Jesus, you know. He doesn't go ahead. But, you know, um, it, 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 uh, it, it's a lot to absorb. I mean, he gives uh, this thing about this mustard seed and, and um, you know, this mustard seed becoming this great tree, which they don't. It's a shrub. And, uh, but it's more or less, can you imagine, it's like an evasive weed. It's, it's like something you don't want in your garden. And uh, this mustard plant that grows, um, it takes over. And so the people listening, they would have been farmers mostly. And they would have known that mustard seeds, mustard plants, Jesus, what are you talking about? We cut those out because they take over our fields and we don't have that much land. And, and pretty soon we don't have any cash crops. So why would you even talk about a mustard seed? And it, it you know, and I couldn't even show you one on the video because it's just so small. I could pour it in your hand and you could see it, but a, a mustard seed is so small. And yet he's talking about this great thing that it creates. Again, he talks about yeast and, and uh, he talks about making all the bread leaven in three measures. And do you know what a measure is? I mean, I mean, we, it's about eight and a half gallons of flour you know, that this woman had. I mean, it, imagine from the floor up here, like a, an eight gallons of flour. And, you know, it's valuable, you know, the flour, and it's part of the daily. So to waste that much, I mean, what she was baking, I have no idea, but that's the point. See, Jesus is talking about the extravagance, the extravagance of these parables and, and pointing to God, and, and, and I feel the, the extravagance of generosity. So she has eight and a half gallons, and then, you know, the yeast that you may have is to, to make that, I put in one tablespoon of yeast for, um, I use seven to eight cups of uh, flour, and the recipe only calories for six when I make our communion bread. So you can imagine, it's like this much flour and, and it's only that much yeast, you know, it's very thin strip, but it makes it grow into two big loaves of bread. And then yet Jesus is saying about eight and a half, and you know, and, and so I use six cups, which is, oh geez, I don't know, you know, <laughs> you know how many, she had eight and a half gallons. Well, it's a lot, you know, I didn't come here for a math and Jesus didn't quiz his uh, followers and I'm not gonna quiz you, but it's a lot for an amount of the yeast. And back then they didn't cultivate yeast. So they're putting out all this flour so you can imagine what the woman had to do. She mixes in the flour with water and then sets it outside so that the airborne yeast can go into it. It's like making a sourdough bread, but somebody thought passing our house would have been like, what's she doing? That's foolish. Why would you put all that flour, almost maybe say a month or several months of savings of their earnings wet out into the open? What if a fox ran by and ate it? What if a dog put his paws in it or ate it? What if a cat stepped all over it? What if a bird, you know, whatever, did it? That would be foolish to waste all your earnings and just set it outside to maybe rise. So I think the people would have understood that, but they would have been confused by these stories. So both the mustard seed and the yeast, they're very pervasive. You know, the yeast, you can't even see in a year. If I had yeast at home, it would come in a jar or a packet and I could see the granules but yet when you put out wet flour, you can't see it. It's invisible. It floats in the air. And that's what she was counting on to make all this bread. It's a lot of hope. And yet some might call it foolish. I talked many a times about the ministries that we do here. Ministries that you help to do because you're so generous. 
Well, you know you're investing in a food ministry when you give to this church, a food ministry that, you know, we help out people we don't even know. Yeah. We deliver meals over close to 100 meals per day. We're over 10,000 meals now delivered. And we assemble all these volunteers and we have cooks in the kitchen and we take your food donations and monetary donations and we cook the food from week to week. We don't know how many people we're gonna have and, and it, they're always coming in. People leave off there and other people just show up. We have total faith in God and we felt that God has called us to do it. And so, but some people might point and say, isn't that foolish? Couldn't you put that money in the bank instead? You know, with this whole COVID thing going on, well, why don't you just put that money in the bank and don't worry about those people. They'll be taken care of by somehow. But we did it. We felt called by God to do this ministry. And as foolish as it may sound, and as foolish as it sounded in the beginning to invest everything that we had to invest in into the food ministry, it's enormous. It's unbelievable. It's very abundant. It's generous beyond all belief. And each day we get phone calls or emails that come in and they say, thank you. People go home from the hospitals, they eat the meals. It saves their caregivers to be able to have to cook and to take care of them. Those coming out of mental and, 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 and abuse and substance abuse uh, recovery, they're able to put that money that they're having back into medication and also in living that they have and they don't have to go back on the streets. People that, that are coming out of chemo or going through chemo treatments, they don't have to leave their homes. They don't have to take a risk. That would be foolish. That would be foolish. Little things that help. We have this program of, of, that we're talking to called Trellis for Tomorrow and Food for All. While we may be donating uh, a small part of our land, we have a lot of land here. And so we give up a little bit of that land, a little bit of our water, and they come in and, and they, they bring in their facilities and then they, they uh, do something really foolish. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they, they, they pay for everything. <laughs> they, they come in, and, but they believe it's going to work, and, and then they talk about planting these plants, and then we give them to the food pantries and food ministries, and that's great. But here's the thing. That's not even the greatest part of the generosity. That's not even the greatest part of the story. They take youth that, that, uh, that are at risk and, and they take youth from other socioeconomical backgrounds and they bring them here at New Hanover and we work together with our youth and then over an eight week period, we cultivate that garden and we work on that garden and we harvest that garden. And then here's even a more crazier part, that's eight weeks during the summer. But what if, what if, you know, gardens grow for you know, spring fall too so what if our, our parents have been asking in our school to, they said pastor is there something that me and my children can do you know like doing as a mission project without going far away we could do it safely with this covid so what if we work the gardens together safely you know people we could sign up and then so those parents and the children and they can learn how to work one-on-one -on -one. and they can learn what it means to feed other people and they can get involved and they can get the sense of gratitude and they get that sense of accomplishment and purpose. And then when the youth come in, they do their eight week part, but then I'm sure then in the fall, we need someone to do all the harvesting and we just keep on taking that product that's producing and we just keep on distributing it to people in need. And what is it? It's a small piece of land we don't use. It's our time that we have and yet, it's abundant amount of generosity giving fresh food to people. Other people would pass by and go, oh, that's foolish. No, it's generosity. It's passing on the good news of Jesus Christ to one another. I, I just see people are still in they A lot of arguments over wearing a mask. Not a big thing, but to some people to have a loved one at home or Whatever that is, it's just so little to do it. And yet think about saving lives. There's so much we can do with such little that we have to invest to be generous in this world. And you say, well, Pastor, what, 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 what did ever God do for me? You, know, you keep on talking about this. Where do you get this sense of generosity?
God risked it all, did he not? God risked it all in sending his son, God's son, Jesus Christ, to cure the world. As we're looking for cures of the COVID and of the disease, the world was looking for cures of hate and evil. And we weren't able to do it by ourselves. We needed God. To be generous sometimes, you must risk it. God risked it all. To be generous, Jesus looked foolish, did he not? The Son of God, the Messiah, the great King, allowed himself to be tried as a criminal, abandoned by his friends, beaten by soldiers, put a crown of thorn upon his head, and then made to carry his own cross, his own instrument of death. Made to carry through the streets where people spit upon and beat him more and, and threw things at him and just jeered him and, and just ridiculed him. He looked foolish indeed, did he not? And for what? But I guess the question is more for who? For you see, we weren't there. But Jesus, just the same, looked like a fool and died on the cross for you and I. And all the other saints and sinners in between. For we couldn't cure the disease of hate then. And like we can't cure the disease of hate and our own sinfulness now. There is no vaccine made by mankind to cure what we have. That is death, eternal sin. But yet, Jesus looked foolish to give us that cure. For he died on the cross for the salvation of our sins for everlasting life. And while we worry day and day about getting this disease and getting sick and maybe dying by or giving somebody else who has immunity concern or are weak and has other challenges and we're worried about that, about getting them sick. More pervasive than anything. Like the mustard seed, like this yeast, sin is much more pervasive in our soul and covers the whole world, billions of people sin, and it happens every day. And yet there is one cure, and that was through the grace of our God and the death of God's Son, Jesus Christ. It's silly to talk about COVID, right? Yet it's silly to talk about sin and everlasting life and thinking that we can cure our own sin and we can't. Every day people do risk a lot. A woman who put our wet flower outside of her house, maybe months worth of, of earnings, only to be either spoiled by the birds and the animals, or and just hopefully yeast will fly in from the sky and land on there and raise it up. The merchant who gives up everything, right? Get that one pearl. Foolish. Yeah, they look foolish, maybe. And maybe even we, by doing these ministries I talked about, or something else that you can do to help others, will look foolish, too. But like Jesus, in the eyes of God, you're generous beyond belief. Amen. Please turn your music now and join along in You Are My King, Amazing Love. Thank you, Pastor. Let's sing uh, You Are My King. You 
one spirit, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together as one body. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, you reign and reveal to us in common things a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help us, dear Lord, and church witness to the surprising yet common ways that you encounter us in abundance, love, and grace in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. When your word is open, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and all of all of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Help them bring a cure and a vaccine for this disease that is pervading us, dear Lord, so that we may treasure the earth and all your creation and live as grateful and healing caretakers of your home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest and branches of trees gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign, direct leaders of a nation to build trust in each other and walk in the ways of peace, almighty God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your spirit helps us in weakness and in intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. Especially we pray for those that we say aloud or keep silently in our heart. Gladys, Marcia, Barbara, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, you show steadfast love and direct us to ask of what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is needed the most. What are the small things that we can do, Almighty God, to help abundant love for our neighbors? Refresh us with new dreams and bring your people into this place and time. While we not be meeting in person, dear Lord, we're meeting in a picnic grove in our cars and and worshiping as a community. We're worshiping online with our brothers and sisters out there, on dear Lord, that are witness with us today as they're watching this. And I ask you to pervade into their homes the peace and the joy of your love, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and grateful God, I ask you to be with the peacekeepers. Dear Lord, that there is so much violence right now that's helping people are so angry. Let us find solutions to set a club to tear gas, dear Lord. Let us find ways to talk, to understand one another, to bring peace to this land. We say we are in one land under God. Let us use God's word to heal all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into our lives are never lost, dear Lord. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. All the saints that have gone before us, Embolden our witness now and that one day gather us all together with all the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers unto you, dear Lord, and those prayers yet answered through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, everybody at home, you do this any which way you can, and for you, I'll say to you, the peace of our Lord be with you always. So please share a sign of peace with one another and uh, peace be with you. At this time, we normally take our offering, but however, as you know, we don't do our offering right now. I just want to thank you because you've been so good. We've been getting more and more offerings in and people are picking up on mailing them in. Also, you can drop them off in our fellowship hall door slot and uh, there's a container there. You push it through the little mail slot that's just opposite the golf course. And of course, you can go online and uh, sign up at our top at our webpage newhanoverlutheran.org and there's a giving section right at the top you click on that it takes you a few minutes and you could be done for the rest of your life you just figure out how much you want and boom it'll do it or you can just do it one time we thank you for everything thank you very much and uh, god bless you that's a great feeling isn't it sharing peace so the lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So come to the banquet, everybody, for all is now ready. The body of Christ, given for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift and faith towards you, and in forever love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please listen to the word that we have to share here. We are uh, doing great things, and, and they're coming out of your generosity. And we talked about doing small acts of help. Every little monetary gift help. Every little food donation helps uh, for our food ministry. Um, you can drop them off at 9 a.m. out in our picnic road lo located on Swamp Picnic Road in Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania, 19525. Or drop them off here at church between 10 and 12, a, uh, 12 p.m., 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. on every Sunday morning at our kitchen doors that will have signs locating to you off of 2941 Lutheran Road in Gilbertsville, PA, 19525. Or to the same address, you can send a monetary donation. And if you'd like, um, you can put in our mail slot right at that location as well, located on next to the road or into our mailbox. Um, another way you can give is go to new, uh, HanoverLutheran.org and you can go on our website and there's a giving uh, tab there. You just simply press on that and send in your donation. So I want to thank you because that is truly saving lives. 10,000 meals delivered. Celebrate. Honk your horn if you're out there and you're on a car or honk your horn or ring a bell or whatever you do at home. Take pots and pans and, and uh, praise the Lord uh, because we just celebrated over 10,000 meals served and thank you for the generosity. Um, our faith formation is still going on online. You can check it out. We have some recent additions for adults. Uh, we have some gospel lessons and Bible studies done by Pastor Mary Ann from St. Luke's in Gilbertsville and myself. And we've been taping them and a couple of them have been posted up there on our webpage at newhandoverlutheran.org. Or you can go to our Facebook page and go through the history and they've been posted there as well. You'll also find um, our Camp Compassion is there and you can uh, go to newhandoverlutheran.org, register, get the password, and for children you can uh, download the materials and do the camp whenever you need to do it. The songs and there, they're all there. And coming up, uh, we will be having Camp Faulkner this week for teenagers, and uh, you'll find that from 5th grade on up, and on the 28th, 29th, and 30th on Swamp Picnic Road, right where we have our worship service. We'll be worshiping out there and doing great things each and every day. And um, so I want to invite you to please look for those materials. Also, um, August 2nd, next Sunday, You'll get a taste of what it would be like in Camp Compassion and also Camp Faulkner. Um, by we'll have some songs during our worship service there, and they'll be performed uh, by our very own musicians. And uh, also, uh, you'll get some testimony from the youth and the children that uh, that that participated in these camps. Come out and rejoice with us. It's going to be truly a great time. So thank you again for everything you do to help us. Be abundantly generous in this world. Talk about abundant mercy, abundant grace, our salvation. I think, Richard, you have something to share with us. Thank you. 
grace, how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. It's blind, but now I see. It's grace that taught this heart to fear. Grace my fears relieved.